this video, we will discuss the steps 5 to 7. If you want to know more how to do steps 2 to 4, just click the eye icon there at the upper corner of your screen to be redirected to that suggested video. Let's consider this problem. Say we have these constraints and the objective would be to maximize profit of 20x plus 30y. Step 2 would be about solving for the x and y intercepts. If you feel like you need a thorough discussion on how to do steps 2, 3, and 4, again, I'd advise you to watch first that suggested video. So that it's easier for us to identify our lines later, it's preferable to have labels for each of the inequalities. In the video about intercepts, it was discussed there that we just have to make x equals 0, then solve for y, then have y equals 0, then solve for x. Notice that we are changing inequality to equation. Like the inequality b, x plus 3y less than or equal to 18, we change it to x plus 3y equals 18. It was discussed in that suggested video that if we are to graph a linear inequality, we just have to graph the associated linear equation. So in here, we may change inequality symbol to an equal sign. Inequalities d and e are indeed possible. This happened because either a or b here is equal to zero. And that's still fine because the decision is that we cannot have both of them to be zero. And for the benefit of others, when we say x equals something, in this case x equals 5, when we graph this, this is indeed a vertical line. And if we have y equals something or y equals 3 in this case, this would be a horizontal line. Now we have the points for graphing, so it's time for us to graph this. Notice that we have a restriction that both x and y are greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, we just have to graph at the first quadrant wherein x and y are both greater than or equal to zero or positive numbers. If you want to review how to plot points, just please click the suggested video. Let's have specific colors for specific lines to guide us later on in graphing.
This time we have the shaded visible region. In that suggested video about graphing inequality, we have thorough discussion on how to do this. In that video, it was discussed that for us to shade a visible region, we need to have a test point, and our test point to consider here will be the origin or 0, 0. So starting with line A, our black line here, 0, 0 is below that line. So we have to check if 0, 0 satisfies this inequality. So substituting 0 for x and 0 for y, we have 0 at the left side of inequality and 12 at the right side. And 0 is not greater than or equal to 12. And this implies that 0, 0 does not satisfy the inequality. Thus, we will not shade the region containing 0, 0, but we will consider the other side instead. Considering that we are only after the points at the first quadrant or the points which are positive, we may opt out shading this region or other than quadrant 1. Similarly, for the inequality B or line blue, if we substitute 0, 0, we'll have 0 less than or equal to 18 and that satisfies that inequality. Therefore, we will now shade the region containing 0, 0 and that would be the region below that blue line. Since the visible region will be the common region for all the inequalities, I suggest that just add shade to the existing shaded region and just delete the region that wouldn't satisfy the other inequality. Just like in this case that the blue line would only consider the bottom region, we have to delete the upper region that only satisfy the black line. So there, as of the moment, this region will satisfy both black line and blue line. Adding now the region for the line C or orange line, 0 satisfies the inequality and since 0 belongs to the bottom region of orange line, we would only consider the bottom region and delete the upper region. For line D or green line this time, we solved earlier that 2x less than or equal to 10 is the same thing as x less than or equal to 5, and so we now have to consider all x's less than or equal to 5, that means the left side of the green line here. And so we have to delete now the right side of this green line. Lastly, for a violet line here, or y is less than or equal to 3, knowing that we are to consider all the y's less than or equal to 3, we should only have the bottom region. Thus, we have to delete the upper region of this violet line. Next step would be identifying the corner points. Note that the corner points that we have here would be the corner points of the feasible region. Thus, it's preferable to draw the shape of the feasible region to identify the corner points. Notice that as of the moment, we only know two corner points and that would be 0, 03 and 0, 02.4, which are the points of lines A and E. But we cannot identify yet the remaining three corner points, but we know that they are intersections of the line C and E, C and D, and A and D. So solving for the intersection of line C and E, we have this.
So there's an intersection of line C and E. Applying the same idea in solving for the intersection of line C and D, we have this. And this goes for the intersection of the lines A and D. Please keep in mind that this case exists. That is, it's possible for us to have two equations with variables x and y in solving for the intersection of these two lines. Whenever you have this, just do this algorithm. Say for example, you want to cancel out the variable x so that you're just left with the variable y. Use their coefficients as multipliers to these equations, but interchange their coefficients so their products would be the same. But choose one multiplier to have the negative so their product would be of opposite signs. Thus, distributing 4 to our first equation, we now have 8x plus 12y equals 24. Distributing negative 2 to our second linear equation, we now have negative 8x minus 10y equals positive 2. We have a suggested video about operational integers. Please watch that if you're having problems with this. Now notice that when we add these two equations, we'd be canceling out the x's because the answer here is 0. So we're left with 2y equals 26, which gives us y equals 13. The same idea applies if you want to cancel the y's. Observe that I didn't have negative sign for either multipliers 5 and 3. This is because the coefficients of our y here are of opposite signs already. And for our next step, that will be verifying corner points in line with the objective. So here, for this step, we just have to use the corner point that we have and substitute these values to our objective's equation 20x plus 30y and base your final answer from either maximizing or minimizing the objective. In here, we have to maximize the objective. That is, we have to get the greatest answer. Since 190 is the greatest answer here, our conclusion would be producing 5 x's and 3 y's to achieve that 190 profit. Let's have this first before we verify the correctness of our answers and compare this with a graph produced by a graphing calculator. 